Hello and welcome to Verkat Wonderland. We are no longer an Arsenal podcast. <laughs> we are a, a home for retired podcasters because, quite frankly, <laughs> we've all had enough of it. Right. Uh, we have we have someone making their podcast debut in the year 2021. It's uh, it's a certain Mr. Jeff Arsenal. How you doing, Treacle? Yes, I'm not too bad, Daniel. I think I've done this before once or twice, though, but 2021's new for me. In, like me, you made your debut in 2012. You're coming up to your testimonial next yeah. year. I'll be getting a gold watch when I, Dan. <laughs> get, the, get the gold custard cream box. <laughs> no, that'll do me, the gold custard creams. That'll do me, honestly. Oh, dear. So you're all right then, are you? Do you want to tell people why you've been away? People think that you've quit. You're never quitting. What, what, what have you been up to? People most probably thought I'd passed away or something like that. <laughs> no, I've been I've been busy building a building in the garden and it's just taken a little bit too long now. So, on the, you know, I'm knackered in the daytime. So brushing myself up for going on a, on a podcast of an evening, I wouldn't have been in the right frame of mind. But uh, we're nearly there now. So you've, unfortunately, you've got me back for a little while, Dan. Oh, it's magnificent! Chris has abandoned us. He's he's gone all he's gone French league nonsense. His team, his French team, won a game this season, so he's all over the French league like it's the most important league ever. God bless him. It is indeed. All right. Secondly, it's uh, <laughs> it's, it's it's Sophie from the Highbury squad. In oh, is it sunny out there, Sophie? You know, it's a bit cloudy today, but it's been real sunny. But I'm just going to tell you it's cloudy, just because it's not fair to say that it's sunny. That's just My- wrong. My temperature gauge outside three degrees. So you double it and add twenty eight, which is seventy five oh, degrees outside. I think <laughs> my I t- inside I, is twenty seven. I, I just took little Vinnie Vieira on a car ride this morning to to run some errands, and he's sticking his head out the window. The sky is blue and the sun shining, and he just loves it. So yeah, little Vinnie Vieira. Oh, dear, so <laughs> depressing. I need to, I need to go and live somewhere warm. I have been in the house for six months without going outside the front door. And I have to do that every year, whether COVID or not. I just I can't deal with the cold and the wet. I hate it. Apart from that, are you okay? I'm good. And your fireplace, though, is all, always very enticing. When I'm always on this show, I want to pop in and have a cup of tea, <laughs> put my fluffy slippers on. <laughs> uh, I have got a, uh, I've got two or three throws around the house. That are <laughs> got, to be ca- <laughs> got to be careful, Sophie. I think that's where the, the ex-wife landed herself. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. The last time I gave someone a ring, I said, it's an eternity ring. We're not getting engaged or married. Just have this. And then Sean took it to school and lost it years later. So there you go. <laughs> um, finally, it's uh, it's Femster. How are you doing, Femster? I was just looking at the last time I sent you an invite to a show, which would have been the uh, 18th of February. You've you've pulled a Jeff Arsenal one as well. Have you been? Um, I think I um, yeah, it's been a hard time, hasn't it, with the um, the old games? No, no, no. I've just been busy. Just all this working from home stuff it always seems so easy, and then uh, you get to homeschooling and all that palaver, and before you know it, you've got yeah. no time for anything else. You'll soon miss them when they're <laughs> off to university, and you're dead to them. You maybe get one phone call every two weeks when they want something. That's, no, no, that's no, what no. I get. I That's send her. Right. A vid- I used to send her a video every day and just tell her about my day. But sometimes it's three or four days before she even looks at it. Oh, <laughs> no, no. Anyway, summer's on its way, fam. Is it? Are you knee deep in snow there? It was snowing today, actually. Uh, just weirdly, just this weird. I went out quickly and I saw snow. I thought it, I thought there were um, there was something falling from the from the trees, and it was it kept going as I passed the trees. I was like, well, what's going on here? <laughs> it's not right and there's no need for it and then whoever's in charge michael fish whoever you are you've got a lot to answer for sir right is he still alive is he is he still I alive he passed, i think he was in oh. a, a, a retirement home for you know they have the retirement homes for people in show business i think they have one for ex-weather presenters it's a shed at the end of someone's garden but i think he's passed do you know what the name of our, our local weather guy is guys you'll love this it's so Go american on. dallas rains <laughs> I thought about you the other night. I was watching LA Story <laughs> with Steve Martin, and he's a oh, weatherman. Great. He's so great. Bill, <laughs> and a young Sarah Jessica Parker in it. Oh, yeah, there's another one lovely. called Storm Something, and I'm like, this is so brilliant. This would totally be in an Adam Sandler movie. It's just great. Yeah, they're yeah. making it up as they go along. <laughs> Jeff, right, you've got uh, four months' worth of Arsenal to cover. Off you go. Yeah. 
<laughs> How did you feel when you were last on, when things were looking not too bad and we were on a decent, no, we were on a terrible run before Christmas. Then we beat Chelsea on a couple of a few days after Christmas and we were on a decent run. Five games about conceding a goal and all those other things. Yeah. And, uh, and then it was rubbish and then it was good and then it was rubbish. Then we beat Spurs and now it's rubbish again. How do you feel about all this, Jeff? What, what's your thoughts on the well, season so far? We've been through it, haven't we? We oh. really, really have been through it. We, we are ge a genuine mid-table team. Um, I mean, 12 wins and 12 losses, I think it stands out. Uh, that, that is a genuine mid-table team. I think, I think we've struggled. We've, I, I think Arteta's struggled. He's learning on the job. Um, and, you know, he's, just, he's, he's, got, he's got to find a way of getting a tune out of the team. But it, it's very, very difficult, isn't it? It's, it's, you know, you know, we, we'll have, we'll have good. I mean, the last five games with Liverpool, we lost yesterday, didn't we? The West Ham draw. I mean, we, we, we could have got a belting in that first half. We was three nil down. Um, and then, uh, you know, the Tottenham before that, we got a won the last five games. If you, if you'd before, before the last five games, you, you know, the, 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 apart from the loss, the West Ham draw, the Tottenham win, the Burnley draw, which we was unlucky not to, it was, a, 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 you know, a, a couple of silly mistakes. And the, and the Leicester away, when we beat, we beat Leicester away. Their teams that are above us, West Ham, Tottenham and, and, and Leicester, um, you know, we'd have, we'd have took that. But, you know, the Liverpool game that we'll know that go into, uh, but he, he's, he's, he started at the back, He's obviously slowly, uh, obviously getting them right, uh, doing his best he can, uh, and and he's generally moving forward. But I don't know. I'm not sure how far, how far he can take take Arsenal without without the backing. And we've had this. I've said this for for Wenger for many many years. Uh, I do think he's a brilliant coach. I really do. I do believe in him as a coach. As a manager, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not quite sure the way he's man managed some situations that you know that have gone on. Um, maybe he could do a little bit better at that. Sometimes you you've got to put your arm around a few players rather than just just slinging them out, so to speak. But he's obviously laid the law down. That's the way he wants to manage. Everyone's got a, 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 a you know everyone's got to sign up to it otherwise he, he's not going to suffer you uh, and that's how they've, they, they've just got to get, they've got to run with that if they want to play for Arsenal do well at Arsenal that's exactly what they've got to do I'm, I'm trusting in the process at the moment um, there's a lot of people on Twitter and the, the social media uh, that are going down the same road as what we did with Arsene Wenger uh, it's like maybe 40% want, want Arteta to go already Uh but I do trust the process. I do think he's a brilliant coach, but I don't think he is the problem. I think the problem is, are we going to get, um, is he going to get the backing? Is he going, is he, is he going to be able to get like maybe a, a hundred or 150 million pound to get those two or three top players in, or he, he, you know, players that can, that, that plays and, and does what exactly what he wants to, them to do because we have got players that are not quite clearly not he, he doesn't want them but we can only we can only go with what we got at the moment and it's a difficult job for him um but but at the moment you know i just think we've got to run with it uh i think he's got i think he's got a, he's got a, he's got a buy until the end of the season i mean he's got a clear path to the end of the season i think we've got to let him go with it and we see where we review it at the end of the season, and then we we're going to need the backing, and that's and that's how it is, really. Sophie, what do you reckon? <laughs> um, you know what's really interesting you just said about Arteta and how he manages players. You know, he's thirty nine years old, and I have a lot of girlfriends and guy friends um, who have egos, and. At 39 years old, when you are a manager and you're in charge of Arsenal Football Club, but you've also been a footballer, you've also lifted the FA Cup, you know, it, players mostly, professional players, have an ego. And I, yeah. I think what Jeff said is very poignant because I mentioned this on the Highbury squad before, is that his age is a blessing and also a curse because a more seasoned manager who has the skills – that go beyond just being a coach. You know, at City, he coached players. That was his role. He was the second to Pep. 
you know, who was able to improve Sterling. You know, we saw and, and have seen all the vignettes and anecdotes about how he helped players. But to manage men, to lead men, to take men into battle is a very different proposition altogether. And you do have to strip your ego a bit with the modern day player and put your arm around them, you know, and whether or not it was correct to ostracize uh, uh, Gwenduzi after what happened at Brighton, fine, that's your decision. He's gone. Mavrobanos, he's gone to Germany. Torreira, he went to Spain. Maitland Niles went to West Brom. Willock went to Newcastle. Uh, you know, these are all of his decisions. The good decisions were get rid of Ozil, get rid of Kalasinac. Uh, he might come back, though, get rid of Mustafi, having a horror show in Germany. And Sogradis, who was probably the, the better of the bunch and who behaved well, um, got his dream move back to Greece, even though he said he was he would never play for another team other than his home team. He, he went to Olympia Gods. That's fine. But I believe that Arteta deserves the summer transfer window but I also think you have to look to some of these points that Jeff's made and then, you know, how he's handled things, right? Played Willian when he was out of form, kept playing Bellerin when he was out of form, has squeezed El Nenny back into the team, has sque squeezed Chambers back into the team. Guys, we've seen this show before. It ends the same way. If people think that Arsenal Football Club are going to evolve and be better in the Premier League, playing Bellerin week in, week out, playing El Nenny, playing Chambers, it's not going to happen. And I would say even Jacker now, and I've defended Jacker, and Jacker's been really good since Thomas Partey um, came to the club. So, as much as I believe that he deserves the summer transfer window, I'm not saying that I trust the process because I don't know what the process is at Arsenal Football Club. 17 years in the making, this has been in the Premier League, guys. And I'm not being funny, but people vilified, bullied, and really treated Wenger terribly towards the end of his tenure. Unai Emery was treated like he was a villain. People took the piss out of him because he couldn't speak English properly, yet Bielsa gets lauded for what he's doing at Leeds and needs a translator to communicate with his players. Yet Arteta gets a pass. He's not even a legend of the club. He was a very lovely captain who managed the club for a few years, uh, captained the club and won an FA Cup. He's not even on that level of some of these other players. You know, Emery won three Europa Leagues when he came to Arsenal. No respect. Zero. The love coupons that he acquired, Danny and Jeff and Femster, winning that FA Cup is carried on till now. But those love coupons are going to run out at some point because 12 losses in the Premier League shows you that it's not just about the players. The manager's culpable too. We do see some green shoots, though, don't we? Sorry to cut across you there. We don't, don't, I mean, we have seen some games this, this year that when you think, wow, you know what? They're, they're organised. They are, they are a, a tough to beat at the back. Um, you know, they are, they are, the way they played the, the, the way out, of course, it scared us so much, the way we're playing them. But I remember when Pep went to went at Man City and, and he struggled for 12 months when they, when they had that crazy goalkeeper in goal and kept on giving mad goals away. But And it does take time. When Klopp went to Liverpool, it took him a while to, you know, get settled in and get the, get the squad that he likes. So I, I think that's why we've got to afford him the time that he needs and like you, like you just pointed out, he's a, he, he's you know there's players in there that know he's not been a manager before, so he's got to gain their respect, really. Um, Jeff, he took the job in 2019. He still had a chance to qualify for the Champions League in that same season. People criticised Emery for taking the, te yeah. the team into the bottom half of the table, losing the dressing room, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Emery was a victim of these players that you are now seeing actually in yeah. Germany do the same thing to other managers. It's a disgrace. Yeah. These players have that mentality and that way because they're so they they, they can't perform, so they blame the manager. Blame but he him, has yeah. been in charge since 2019. We were eighth last season when the league finished. We're now in 10th. We could fall further down the table. It's not an improvement. Nothing's improved. And you could say, yes, the players, he got rid of the so-called Wengerites. Bellerin's still there. Yes, Xhaka's still there. Elneny's there. There are still players there. But he bought in Gabriel. He bought in Party. He bought in Ceballos. He bought in Willian. He bought in Runnison. He bought in Matt Ryan. 
He sent all these other players out on loan. He's not been able to move the chess pieces as well. And the the games after, you know, the, the, the record after 50 games played for Unaya, for Mikel and for Arsen speak for themselves when you look at that record and you see what each one has done. So it's his choice that he kept playing Bellerin when he was bad. It's his choice that he kept, you know, um, switching, uh, dumping Be- Pepe when he went on a five-game good run but then benches him. It's his, it's his fault that he benched Lacazette after he kind of saved us when Oba wasn't playing well. I mean, he makes these choices. So yeah. as bad as the players have been, he's also culpable for the decisions that he's made. Yeah, and no. um, okay. yeah, just okay. to jump in there. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very. Um, <laughs> how can I put it? I'm very. My confidence was shaken on Sunday because I've been sort of back, not not fully back in, but you know, just I, I'm, I'm very much like Jeff. You know, let's let's give him the the next window. Let's see how it goes. But that Sunday performance was something of just that that shot me personally to my core. I was like, I, I never would have thought I would see Arsenal play in such a fashion, first of all, to go down in, in, in the cowardly way is what I was I was saying in the group chat. I said, we played like cowards and I, I don't ever want to see Arsenal play like that. I mean, if you're going to lose three to... I mean, it was three going on five, let's be honest. They, I mean, by the end of the game, Liverpool could have scored whatever they wanted. But if, if then you, you come out and you've had two tame shots in 90 minutes... And you still lost three 0 You might as well just have <laughs> have gone for it. And then all the all the things that you know we that I was sort of pushing our record after Christmas, our defensive record, our defensive record has, has gone to pieces. To be honest with you, <laughs> we've we've now going on letting on letting in forty goals now, where we were twenty six a couple of weeks ago. And um, you know our um, record after Christmas, we've still lost four games. In that period, so and we haven't picked up as many points as you probably think we have in that time as well, which is why we're still in tenth, no matter how much we think we've improved. So it's 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 kind of like one of those ones where I'm I'm kind of in Jeff's camp and I'm in Sophie's camp because I'm looking at and I'm saying if his name wasn't Arteta, if it was let's say Emery, uh, yeah, let's say Emery in charge at this point, what would how would we feel as friends? And I keep asking myself that. Am I giving him a pass because, you know, he, he, he communicates well and he, he, he speaks nice. He says all the right things. Is that why I'm giving him a pass? But I'm, I'm still sort of like in the air with that. And Femster, you know, he got his pass because he won the FA Cup. Beautiful. We love winning the FA Cup. The difference between him and Emery is Emery got battered in his cup final and Arteta beat Chelsea and he beat Man City on the way to that. And that buys you time because you won a trophy in your first half season. You beat Lampard, you beat Pep Guardiola, you beat Chelsea, you beat City. You know, those are big results. We're the masters of the FA Cup. But we're a cup team right now. That's what we are. We're not a Premier League competitive team. We've been a cup team for years. And we've been able to ride on those wins and it's been great. But at the same time, you know, he needs to make us more competitive in the Premier League. And when, look, Aston Villa, one point away from relegation last season. Look at them this season. They've made adjustments. Dean Smith's coached certain players up. They bought players in. They've done well. They've integrated. West Ham, everyone last season was protesting. David Moyes, out. They wanted the owners out. It was a shambles. And somehow they could make it into the Champions League. And when was the last time West Ham ever finished above the Arsenal in the Premier League? Leicester City, look what they've done. Elevated the club, very well run, investments, smart, shrewd, sell, buy, replace, replenish, repeat, rejuvenate, reboot, they go. You know, now our competitors are who? Wolves, Southampton, Everton. Even Everton finished, what, 12th last season? They could finish above us this season. So when you see these other clubs around us that have improved from last season and we are still in the same place and stuck, you ask yourself why. Is it the players? Yes. But is it also what we're not doing from improving the players and tactics and how we approach teams? I think it's 50-50. I don't think you can just blame the players. 
Yeah, all very good points, uh, and I agree with all of it. And I see very little of anything that makes me think that we're going anywhere. Jeff, looking, I did a tweet yesterday where I added up the. It's just a, a, a rough estimate of the front three for the for the, us and our competitors. Do you think that now we've got rid of the the, the people like Raúl who have gone out there and I think. I think that what the idea with Pepe was to go and do what Dortmund do, go buy a player for a lot of money, have one or two good seasons and flog into Real Madrid or Barcelona for a hell of a lot more money. Do you think that, that now that the people who have been wasting our money have gone, it's gonna we're going to have a better transfer window this summer because that is going to shape Arteta's future as Arsenal manager, what he does this transfer window. He's really got rid of some of them. But then, like Sophie was saying, there's there's other players. Terea looks like we're going to get either he's going to go out on loan for, I was listening to a podcast that I think it was um, Tom was saying um, the Torreira is either going to go on loan um, for a season to Boca Juniors or we're going to let him go for free. A player that we bought paid, what, 30 million, 25, 30 million pounds for. At some, after his first season, we were thinking, that's a 40 million pound player. And then we've got the Gwenduzi, we've got the Kalasnich, we've got all these other players that are out on loan. The only two players that are out on loan that have had a decent loan are both centre-backs. Yeah. Mavropanos with Stuttgart and Saliba with uh, nice. Nice. Yep. and they, they have both been outstanding for their clubs and what is the one thing we don't need at this club at the moment is more decent centre-backs so Jeff well this is, the, this is the thing this is the thing because I mean it, 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 you know it dates back to what I was saying earlier on I mean and I did I've said Arsenal were a cup team five years ago because I could see, you could see it coming um, and that's because I don't think we've had the, the, the investment to, to make. We're never going to be able to really compete in the, in the Premier League when you've got teams like Manchester City. And, uh, you know, people can spike back to Leicester and everything else, but Leicester are not going to win the league again. Uh, you know, it's going to be City. Man United have got the power to do it. Uh, uh, Liverpool, the way they've come on and the investment that they've, they've, they've had. But, you know, do you at the moment, you know, you, you, we've, seen, we've seen the players that Arteta... As, as ball, Arteta and they do, you know, a uh, bit of a catastrophe with William. I mean, I, I'm, I'm still a believer in the guy. Uh, I'm not sure I would have done the deal because it was a lot of money. All right, he might have come on a free, but he's come from Chelsea. Uh, I, I think that he, he, uh, William maybe he chose Arsenal because he wanted to stay in London more than he just wanted to play for the football club, you know, but do you really trust Arteta? If he is given a load of money, do you trust him, him and Adu to buy the players that we need? Uh, that, I mean, that's, that's the bigger question because it is from, from his form. Um, I would say, you know, he's, he's really got, to, he's got to do better than what he's done. Um, you know, previously, and you can only see in the form that he, 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 he's done. You know, it's very difficult, isn't it? And just on that, I was um, I was looking at um, I was talking to someone today. I was like, there is a lot of work for two men to do in one summer. Are they going to get any help from anyone else? I'm, I, I think we got um, <clears throat> the guy joining from the Premier League. Is it Richard Onions? Is his name? Is it, I think that's his name, Richard Onions or, or, yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Someone can correct Richard me. Garlic. In Richard Garlic, I think it is. Yeah. Two things <laughs> I hate in life. That's got yeah. to be. That's, 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 yeah, so, that's, that's got to be the podcast. Uh, <laughs> that. Yeah. So really you've got you've got basically three men running a whole transfer window and where, with no scouting department. Got rid of yeah, everyone. Where, there is tons of work to do. Like um, Sophie was saying, you've got players coming back. A lot of players coming back from loan. You you better have made a decision on them by now. You, you've got to sell players by now, somehow in this window. You've got to sort out contracts with players with one, two years left on their contracts. You've got to clearly, you know, replenish your squad as well. That's a lot of work. For two, that's a, that's work that a manager shouldn't even be involved in, if we're being honest. So if we're talking about just Edu, there's nothing else around them that we can see. What is it? Is it Per Mertesacker? Who who else is is helping Edu and and Arteta in all of these this work that they have to do? You know what I really find interesting about that is so I hear so often Arteta's inherited a mess. Emery inherited a mess. Arsenal became institutionalized. And what you saw was that once Wenger realized what he was dealing with, he just tried to manage the club. 
and get the best out of what he had with the tools that he was given, mm. i.e., let's spin this FA Cup win. I said this on the show last night. Let's spin this FA Cup win and everyone, everyone will think that this FA Cup team can go on and be competitive in the Premier League. Hull. We win again the following year. Let's spin this. We've got the team that can compete in the Premier League. He does it again. Let's spin this. We've got the team that can win the Premier League. It's happened season after season. Then what, what happened before that? You get marquee signings. One year you get Santi. Oh, my goodness. Santi, Santi. Then you get Ozil. Then you get Sanchez. But nothing else is done We've got to, su check. <laughs> to support the manager and build on those players. Imagine if we had built on the Santi, Ozil and Sanchez years in their prime and got a proper center back, a proper defensive midfielder, you know, uh, the Giroud, I will always say was disrespected and underappreciated at Arsenal, but in terms of finding, you know, once Van Persie left, finding a replacement and a, and a striker with pace, et cetera, et cetera. So it's been six, one and half a dozen of the other because you know, Wenger gets the blame for the rot, but he's also a victim of the way the club was run. And then it gets to Emery, and then Emery inherits an institutionalized mess and tries to instill a new culture, i.e. Ozil, you have to turn up for training. You can't just turn up when you want. You, you guys aren't going to dictate what's happening here. But unfortunately, he lost that battle. Arteta, on the other hand has done it a different way where he's ostracized players in order to get what he wants because he feels that's the only way to do it. Meanwhile, what's happening above us is still the same. Weak source management, weak source owners, they're happy with the bottom line, they're happy with the club to be in the black, and as long as we're making profit. And to be honest with you, when you look back, hindsight 2020, and I'm not saying like Wenger should still be manager, but when you qualify for the Champions League year after year after year with players like Javinho and Shamak and, <laughs> and some of these guys, I mean, seriously. So we're a mess as a club from top to bottom. And now we're having to fix things. And it's not just Arteta fixing things. Emery had to try and do it too, Danny. And unfortunately, he didn't work out for him. But had he won that Europa League final? he probably would have kept his job a little bit longer. Good point. Fam, you look like you want to say something. <laughs> where do you start? Uh, uh, yeah, where do you start? Um, I don't know. I, 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 I like, I like, I like Mikel Arteta. You know, he, he, he seems to want, but I, I'm, I get a feeling that he's getting to the stage where he's now ready to throw some throw some players under the bus is is probably the best way I would say it. I was <laughs> he's ready to up, Fem. How how much? Yeah. How many more players? How much longer can he go falling out with people? Falling yeah, out with a bummy young could be the bit close. that's broke his season. Yeah, I think a lot of people did say on that um, North London derby Sunday that this that decision could make or break. The relationship, the the performances of um, Aubameyang, and since then he just hasn't looked the shame same. Shame on Aubameyang! Shame yeah, he, on is, him! It is a shame on him that as well, actually, because it, it, the manager, you know, I think correctly decided, you know what, this this can't be the standard that we set at the club, which is fair enough. And he seems to have he's just been sulking ever since, as far as we've seen on the pitch. He just hasn't been the same player but in his defense on just speaking about sunday alone i don't think he should be playing basically left wing back <laughs> for, for for any club that he's playing for he was chasing shadows on sunday in in defensive areas that i, I just think if you give a guy like obama young a massive contract you you cannot be thinking that okay this guy is going to play left I, I said it at the time when we signed him i said he's he's he can't play left midfield or left side forward chasing back and forward at the age of 31 32 yeah Femster, there's no way Femster, can i ask didn't he almost win two golden boots playing mostly on the left i you say that but then was that a left in a in a in a um in a three-man defense that he had mainly because Emery played a three-man defense as well. 
So he always had sort of um, what's his name behind him, Kalasanac at that time, and I'm last season was mainly. That. But Maybe Tierney's a better sad. player, right? The, play, the players are better. Coat. Party's better than what Emery had in midfield. We're yeah. better at left back, left wing with Tierney than we were before. I mean, he almost this. You're a footballer. You score goals. He he almost won the Golden Boot twice playing on the left wing. And what has he done playing down the middle? Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I, no, I totally, totally get that, but. At what point do you say he's 32 years old? You have to make a decision where he's going to play. He cannot keep playing left wing, uh, as uh, as far as I can see. Anyway, I don't think that's a well, good he, position. He shouldn't be Not, playing, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, that's, that's what I was just about to say. There's better left sided players in our squad than him. And look so how he played either, into form. He played Pepe back into form by playing him on the left. On the left, and yeah. And, he dro- on the and right. then he dropped him. And then he drops him. But then yeah. we look at the first half of the season, so many things have not gone right for Aubameyang. First half of the season, it seems Arteta thought we had Giroud up front and we're piling in crosses after crosses. And, and that's why Aubameyang was probably out injured with a sprained neck doing that the whole time. Five, 523 crosses. <laughs> oh, oh shit, the bed. <laughs> and then, you know, I've said this so many times, I'm repeating myself. If you're a defender, what's the, Femi, what's the last thing as a defender you want Aubameyang to do? run at you yeah making and how often is he getting the chance to do that and we saw the thing from freddie lundberg from 2019 saying i can't uh, playing obama young and lacazette together doesn't work it leaves us defensively weak were you going to say something there jeff you unmuted yourself yeah i I think it's a conundrum that that he's struggling with uh michael to be honest with you because um it's, it's, it's proven that he can score plenty of goals, Aubameyang. Uh, he's most probably our best goal scorer. And mm-hmm. you can see, uh, I, I prefer him on the left, right? Uh, I don't think he's a number nine. I don't think he's a number nine in the Premier League. Definitely not. No. I think he's too, he's, he's too robust for him. Uh, he, 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 don't, he don't really go up to win headers. I think he's more worried about his hair than anything else. Um, but he, he is, you know, when he's, like you said, Danny, when he's on that left-hand side and he's facing down on a defender, um, there's nothing like you've seen him. He, he's won us cups and semi-finals. Um, if he gets into the, he does his best work in the last third. I don't think, right, him playing as a left wing back in his twilight years is going to do him any good. And I know, if you play, you play, and you've got to do a job. But I don't think we're getting the best out of him and Mikel has got to find a way to get the best out of him. The problem is we don't have a number nine. I do think Aubameyang should play on the left, but then we don't really have a number nine and it's very difficult. And he's trying, he's trying to shoehorn these players all over the place. All them front four have played left side, the right. I mean, we had Aubameyang two weeks ago. He was playing on the right-hand side when Saka was playing on the left or Pepe on the left or whatever. And I was thinking, well, what, why are you playing Aubameyang on the right-hand side? It's crazy. Uh, and until he, until he sorts himself out or we get the, the, the personnel in that he wants and he believes in, and they believe in him that can do a job, and then we set ourselves up, this is what we're going to get. But we somehow, in my opinion, and I know it's not it's not going to be popular, but I think we've got to leave him on the left, but we've got to find a way, whether you get Saka behind him, whether you get someone else behind him, to play, uh, you, you know, like, like, a, like a, a left wing back. Because he is not a left, you know, at the moment he's playing as a left wing back. And he's not a left wing back. He can't do that. He, well, he, you know, he doesn't. He doesn't want to do it either. No, That's he doesn't want to do thing. it. Yeah, you can see you know? his, his body he language. Doesn't, he doesn't want to doesn't do it. Want he's never do done it before, really. And we play. Be- we we play so much better with Lacazette in the nine role and Pepe on one side, Saka on the other, ESR behind. You know, now you've got Udegaard, you've got Xhaka <clears throat> Party. Aubameyang just doesn't fit this team right now. And Look unfortunately, he's that's captain. That's a prob- well, That's a problem. Well, this is the decision that that, that Arteta's, Arteta's got to make, and you know, you know, and he's given him whatever happened. We we, we paid. A, we give him a big contract, and once you pin a contract on a man like that, you do think, well, okay, uh, the most paid player at the club. You're more or less saying, well, we're going to build a team around you. 
but it just I, hasn't it hasn't worked building out. Building a team, uh, building a team around a thirty-one-year-old who's going to be thirty-two in June. So yeah. Arsenal. Mm. Can I ask a question? I mean, uh, obviously, there's a lot of Arsenal knowledge in here. As an Arsenal captain, I, I've only seen one Arsenal captain stripped of the captaincy, which was William Gallas, and that obviously oh, Jacques, ended. Jacker. Well, Jacker, yeah, that's that's a good point actually. But as an Arsenal captain. <laughs> who's been popular in the dressing room, ever lost the captaincy to someone else. I, I don't know when, who Tony Adams took over from. I, I can't remember that far back, but obviously Tony Adams was captain for sort of 20 odd years, mate, probably. And then probably taken Pat over Rice, by... Pat Rice yeah. or O'Leary, maybe? maybe uh, yeah, yeah taken know. over by Vieira is, is, is sort of my era that I saw. So I Before Tony Adams, it was Kenny Sampson. Yeah, so is it possible? I mean, I can't think of a situation where you take the captain seat off your star player and it ending well, is what I'm thinking. You know what didn't end well is, unfortunately, Aubameyang made a huge mistake. As Arsenal Football Club and as Arsenal captain, you do not show up late for the North London derby. Firstly, you do not show up late for any game. And I think Arteta's mistake was letting him back into the team for the Europa League that week. He shouldn't have done that. If you're gonna if you're gonna bench him in the North London derby, and it was the right decision, and we won that game, you continue benching him until this is the problem. We've enabled players over and over and over again. No one's bigger than the club. And if you want to make a stance like a George Graham and say, you know what? No, not on my watch. Not in my team. You do not show up late. I'm so offended. I'm more offended by Bamiyang showing up late for the North London derby as captain than I was Xhaka throwing his shirt down when he was getting abused time and time again by Arsenal fans and put in a position to fail by Emery. It, it culminated in frustration. I get that moment. But to think you can just waltz in late to the North London derby as captain of Arsenal Football Club, who are you? What is that about? What's the mentality? We're supposed to be evolving the DNA and the culture. And this is the leader of the team? Rubbish. And Absolute didn't he, garbage. Didn't he leave early from the warm down after that game? He refused to do the warm down after the game and sped off in one of his wrapped cars, <laughs> which he has every right to buy and purchase. The dude can do what he wants. Enjoy it. You've earned it. But do it, it, not be behaving that way as Arsenal captain. No, I, I totally agree. But it is, it is a difficult situation because we're, you know, Arteta's in the results business. He knows he's under pressure. Um, and, and if he if he if he jogs on Aubameyang as well as all the other players that he's done, down to him being late, um, um, and then it all goes it all goes the wrong way, then then his head's on the block. Um, but having said that, he's, he, Aubameyang's form has been has been atrocious, and it and it is, I, you know, it's, unfortunately, it's come straight after him signing that great big, big agreement. But in another yeah. world, in another time, like you say in the George Graham days, he most probably wouldn't play for Arsenal ever again. Ever again. Yeah, but I, unfortunately, the time is different now. Uh, I wish it was. I wish it was different. Put it this way: if we did have. If we could, if we did have a, a proper strong squad where he could do that, it could leave him out of the team for two months or something like that. I think there's a young move. Jeff. There's a young fella yeah. from Brazil called yes. Gabriel Martinelli. Yeah, well, I was going to get on to that later on. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I was yeah. going to get on to that later on. Yeah, have it's true. Got, have you got to forget going there, so? Uh In about mm. five five minutes. But there's someone that's made a comment in chat, and I thought I think it's so important. Jason Seeley. Do you know where else he's he's a feeble leader? He showed up once for a post game interview in the last two months, and that was the hat trick after Leeds. Where has he been? The captain of this team. They've sent Saka out, ESR out. This young these young players who have saved our season. And I respect the Bamiyang, the fact that he saved our season for the previous two. Leno saves also saved our season. It was a combination of both of them that kept us where we were in the league. But to not show up and be vocal as a captain, and I'm not being funny, you can do whatever you want on Instagram and you can flash your cars and your diamonds and your jewellery, but it really pisses me off when players do that when they've been garbage and they've shown up late for the North London derby. 
I don't want to see it. No. It's ro it's rotten, you know. And then you send out young players like Saka and ESR to speak after a loss. I mean, what's it's no, it's no good having a gold Lamborghini or whatever it is if you if you can't get through the traffic in London to get to a football match. Seriously, leave an hour earlier, dude. Are you? I mean, I know it's crazy. It's these are the crazy. systematic institutionalized problems that Arsenal have had. And they, they got rid of some of it in January. Obama Yang thinks he's bigger than the club because he's acted that way. To me, Lacazette is more of a leader. We play better when he's in that number nine role. The youngsters around him respect him more. There's more cohesion. We have more creativity. We have more chances. And we do better. And unfortunately, sometimes it happens. Great players, you know, they don't, they don't perform or they have terrible seasons. And right now, Mikel Arteta has a massive decision to make. You know, we've got a huge game on Thursday. Does he start Aubameyang or does he throw caution to the wing and bring on Martinelli? What does he do? What do you think he'll do with regard? I mean, that, that situation comes at the end of the season. We're still languishing in ninth or tenth. We get we get jumped out of the, uh, uh, the Europa League. There's nothing left to play for. Uh, he's got to look back on Aubameyang. What do you think he'll do, Arteta? Will, will it stick I'm, going to, I'm going to say something right now that not many Arsenal fans want to hear. And I'm sorry. <laughs> but I would sell Aubameyang before I sold Lacazette. I would sell Aubameyang. I would sell Bellerin. I would sell Elneny. I would sell Chambers. Lacazette is an under... He's our Bobby Firmino. This is what sometimes Arsenal fans don't see. What he does for the players around him in the games he's played. Go watch it, you guys. I think you guys have. ESR plays better, Saka. I mean, they all he play. He works hard and he tracks back. He does so much to make everyone around him look like a better player. And he's more of a leader. And his attitude is better. And I'm sorry, Aubameyang's attitude and performance this season, if you're really wanting to rebuild Arsenal, well, now who's going to buy him? I don't know. Lacazette's probably worth more in the in, in the transfer market. So we could find ourselves in another situation where we give up the asset like we did Emmy over Leno. You know, let's sell the guy who can bring in the most money, but it's not the right guy to sell. If you really want to build a team and have a team that plays football week in, week out and, and adheres to your tactics, Lacazette is not the guy to sell. He's not. And I think we, um, yeah. No, sorry to cut across you. No, no, I think, mate, um, go on. I think we um, we kind of signed that, that, that deal as soon as we signed the Aubameyang deal last season, I think we kind of made that decision because signing a guy, 31, 32, is the same thing as the Ozil deal, to be honest with you. He's got no resale value now at all. <laughs> you know, you, you literally have to, if you want to get rid of him this summer, you have to let him go on a free to make up for the wages and whatever else bonuses that he's got now. Mm -hmm. I think we, we kind of have, like you're saying, we have to sacrifice Lacazette now. And you know what, Femster, you know, you know what the difference is when I compare Laka to Firmino, you know, the difference is people think Firmino's great. People don't see Laka as great. But you know why? Because Firmino, what he does and the job he does in the team, he has a Mane and a Salah to score the goals. Laka doesn't need to score 25 goals a season. But if he had a Mane and a Salah type around him, OK, you would see a massive difference that's that's just my humble opinion um when it comes to you, you have to ask like bigger questions in terms of you know how that front line and how that forward line has been and who's contributing and what happens when certain players are playing and i think you'll see that if he had those assets around him pepe has been a bust I've tried to defend the guy. Five games in a row, fine. But he's been a 72 million, please stop. You know, he's the one supposed to be getting those goals as like a Mane and a Salah. We paid for that. It's not happened. It's not happening. And I'm not sure it's ever going to happen. But you know, after the season he had, Sophie, just before he signed that contract, um, he saved us. One of the FA Cup, maybe. Yeah, but that's rearview mirror, Jeff. Yeah, that's I, know, last I know you look forward. I know that. I know you should look forward that, when, when, when you are signing a player. You, 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 you have really. But this is not Arsenal. This is how they've got to change the way they think. 
right? That's how they sign players. They sign they sign players on what they've done in the past, right? You know, players like a Bamiang, you've got to look forward and say, okay, well, how much are you going to be worth to us for the next three or four years? And, uh, you know, now 250 or 300 grand a week doesn't seem like we've done a good good no, job there. No. We've got to think big. And we're not. We're still. We're still. We, we, we're not at that level yet. We're we, we, we're not organised enough. We haven't got the correct people doing the job, and 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 running the the company, how it should be run. And that's where the problem. And until we get to that stage, this is how we're going to jog along. Yeah, you know, we've lost no twice to Villa this season, twice to Wolves. We've lost terrible games against teams that are average. Drop four and points to Burnley. Drop- Drop four points to Burnley. Yep. You know we need we need a right back. We need an um, a, a left back because Tierney is injury prone. We need a partner for Party. And some people are asking if Party is the right guy and can he hack it in the Premier League. We're going to need to find like a. Rep- I mean, yeah, you're going to promote Aziz. What are you going to do? Is Bal- why not give Balogun a chance? Throw him. Throw him in. What is what do we have to lose right now? You want to party? You're better off having Aziz with Party than Sabios with Party. If Jack is injured, I mean, you know, you take risks. The familiarity breeds whatever, whatever the saying says, but it okay. doesn't mean it's yes. Um, so it's just a, it's a, it's a mess, an absolute mess. Um, and I'm going to have to leave, unfortunately, because we're going to do our show in just a minute. Um, so, but the conversation's the too screen. good. Um, yeah. People can go click on that and go and watch that. We've, we've well, been click, watch it. if you're in here. Don't <laughs> leave. Just watch it on replay because we'll, well, you can watch it on replay. And we'll you don't have to leave the show. You when then, you get, then, you get two, then you get two for the price of one. Exactly. Well. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so for people not listening live, so tell them about your podcast and what they can expect and all the great stuff you've been doing. You've been really. I suppose you've got any time to sleep. The amount of stuff you've been doing, <laughs> top quality stuff. Thanks, Danny. And um, we, you can find us at Highbury Squad uh, on Twitter, YouTube. Uh, we got content every day. We do stuff a little bit differently. It's not just about analytics and, um, you know, tactics and game day reaction. We have some really good storytelling from the beautiful game. So please come over and check it out. And I always want to thank this podcast. A Burkamp Wonderland has a very special place in my heart. Jeff introduced me to Danny um, a few years ago. And the rest is history, as they say. But these guys are the best and they've always been supportive of me and I adore them completely. So thank you for having me on. Thanks for coming on, Soph. Okay. I want to do a round table one day with you guys, you, Chris, Jeff, Danny, and, you know, like Kev, and we'll do that. We'll get a round table going on the Highbury squad. That'll be great. That'll Excellent. be great. Brilliant. Have a good yeah. show. Uh, thank you for joining us. Good Take to see care. you. Take care, Bye-bye. mate. Uh-huh. Take Have care, man. Later. Enjoy. Bye. Bye-bye. Good luck, Sophie. If uh, oh the camera's gone all weird. If any of uh, ABW are watching and you want to come and join us for the last half hour or so, I know Chris is in there, but he's probably busy. Um, I know Cactus is in there. Just just send me a WhatsApp and then I'll um I'll invite you into the show. Um, Fem, do you think Arteta is trying to save face by going the new bloke, the young man, going in there and going, nope, I'm in charge now. You cross me and you are out. Do you think it's it's more of a case <laughs> straight away, Ellis? No. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah do you think that that's the case of it or, or do you think he oh, here we go he's update ellis is in the bath happy birthday <laughs> ellis <laughs> yeah what's your thoughts on why arteta has this attitude towards constantly falling out with players sending them out on loan and i'm not going to uh, list it because you know it all yeah that's that's been on my mind since since saturday as well is um squad management is is crazy um you know, I, I think sometimes when you've got too many choices, that's a problem. Um, so I think that was one of the problems, which was he had too many choices. Then he obviously, funny enough, I said this actually, if you look at Pep Guardiola, um, this is probably something you learned from Pep. Whenever he goes in at a club, so when he went in at Barcelona, uh, Ibrahimovic, first player that he, him and Ibrahimovic booted him out. He, he went to Bayern. Yeah, he got oh. rid of Ibrahimovic uh, within a season. Um, he went to Bayern within a season. He got rid of, was it like Schweinsteiger or Kroos? I, I can't even remember. But another big player, he just picks picks on a big player, gets them out. He went to Man City, who is the biggest character in the dressing room, was Joe Hart at the time. 
got rid of Joe Hart. So I think that's something that Mikel might have learnt from Pep. So comes to Arsenal, biggest fish in the pond, Mesut Ozil, Ganduzi, you're out of here. Set an example for the rest of the squad is is what they do. It's my way or you are out. Um, and I think he came in with that attitude, thinking that, not knowing, unfortunately, that the COVID market would hit. So you you now are going to have to work double hard to shift players, aren't you? So, yeah, we've, we've had to work 10 times harder to shift the players. Then you're left with players that you thought you could get rid of for nothing. Then there's a lot of indecision um, on his part and on Edu's part. Edu, as a sporting director, should be more forceful with Arteta to make decisions. Um, I'll give you even a, a, a latest example. There's so many, but Eddie and Ketia, for example, in January, you have no intention of using. He hasn't played. When last did he play? I wonder. I, I can't even remember. Probably December or earlier than that. He hasn't kicked the Arsenal ball. He's hardly been on the bench since January. Yet you kept him. Uh, there was rumours of offers, and the first thing that Mikel said was, "No, no, no. He's not going anywhere. What's the point?" The, these are the types of things that you think this must be so disheartening for some of these players. Okay, Eddie, now what's he going to do? He's he's just kicking around on the bench in the reserves. He's played the under twenty three game. Reese Nelson's go, playing Femi. for the on. Femi's last game against Man United on the thirty thirtieth of January. He came on for the last minute. Game before that was three games before that. Nine minutes against Palace, and the, then the rest of the season before that, he'd got he'd got loads of time. So yeah, he's just he's not even he's on the bench for the last game against Liverpool. But the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games before that, not even in the squad. There you go. To be fair, yeah. I mean, I think I think I mean he, he early early doors he left Lacquer out for Eddie Nketiah, didn't he? For a long time, he's had plenty of. Plenty of goes at Eddie Nketia. and but I think it's come to a stage now where Arteta thinks, well, I'll give you plenty of chances. You, you're not really what I want, so you know we'll, we'll leave it. I think he's only got a year left in his contract. I think he's got the same um, agent as uh, Balogun, so and obviously, Nelson and Nelson. So um, they're obviously all talking to each other. They're all in the same boat. They've all got their contracts coming to an end, and um, maybe maybe Arteta's think, well, okay, if, if you if you you know you're not good enough, if you're not good enough for Arsenal, and you you do, you, do, you don't want to sign the new contract because if they sign the new contract, we'd most probably get a few quid for them somewhere, but they maybe they're going to go off and 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 join the new club and get the most of of the contracts that they, that they could they, you know they could they could get, but the problem is. Again, it's it, it's trouble. It's obviously it's very very difficult to manage the squad. You have got all those young players coming through, and you don't say he hasn't given the young players a chance. Of course, Saka was there, but he brought Emil Smith Rowe in, uh, and you see what a, what a, what a good job he done when he come in, you know. But it's very difficult. But we we are just going to have to rock and roll with it for now, and and see what happens in the summer. See if he gets the backing, and see. How uh, how he shapes up if he's given the backing, even if he's not, you know, you can go and pick players off from, you know, the championship. There are players out there, or you know, play, uh, uh, leagues abroad that don't cost you fifty million pounds. You've got to go. And, you've got. To, uh, this is the problem, you know. Clubs have got academies and feeder academies all over the world. You know, we, we don't seem to be out there anymore. We seem to have uh, dropped all our scouts out. So how are they How are they going to find these players unless they're using the big agents? Well, the big agents are going to siphon enough money from you, which we don't have. So it's going to be very difficult for us. I think we've fallen out with a couple of the agents already, and I think we've paid an absolute fortune to agents over the last couple of years. I think we were the top one of the top three sides that had paid money to agents. It's uh, it's it's crazy. Kia Durabchum. Um, yeah, Jeff, you were saying in our chat uh, something about the Liverpool game. What did you want to bring up? No, just I mean, did you, did you, we we talk about the Liverpool game, and I mean, everyone's going mad about how bad we were. Of course, we yeah, were bad, sure. but uh, you know, I, 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 unfortunately, I haven't had the, the 
what to call it, a, a, a watching it twice. I, I would rather watch the game twice because when you're watching it live, it's completely different to when you watch it a second time and you can, because you know the score, you can calm yourself down and look at it and see where we're going wrong or right or whatever. You, you know, we've unfortunately met Liverpool uh, when they've hit a bit of form. or they're, 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 He's obviously organised them now. They, they're, you've got to remember over the last couple of years, they've mostly been the best football team in the world. So they're not going to turn into a, a, a really poor team overnight and continue to be a poor team. We know the reason why they, 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 they struggled at the start of the season. They lost, they lost two or three top, top players, the two centre-halves. They lost Trent for a little while. And then and maybe their best player this season, Diogo Jota, they lost him for a, a number of games as well. Now, so they're a top team and they just come they come to our gaff. Klopp knows how to play against Arsenal. Uh, you know, that, that high press, especially for the first, tw- normally for the first 15 or 20 minutes, they've battered us at Anfield, haven't they, in the past? Uh, and that's exactly what, that is his blueprint. He, he's come to Arsenal, uh, that high press, high aggression, really get in their faces, win the ball high up the pitch because they are Arsenal will give you a chance with the, the way we throw the ball out and pass about. We are going to give people chances. We are going to give the ball away. Uh, and you see, you saw in in Danny Ceballos, um, you know, I look at, I, it's a shame because when Danny, first, that first game that he, he, he played, I thought, wow. We've got a player here. We finally found the player. We just let Ramsey go. And I thought to myself, this kid, he, he can replace Ramsey. He looks better than Ramsey to me. Okay. Um, but then he just, he's just fallen away. I think that first few games he was okay. But it's a big thing when you come to, when you come to a club like Arsenal. Um, it's like you get a honeymoon period where you're really buzzing. You, you, most I can see him buzzing around a training camp and really playing well. And you know, But after six or seven or eight games... The, 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 it, it dawns on you what a big thing it is that when you're going to have to try and carry that midfield, that centre of the park, uh, into game after game after game, the, the, the big uh, the, 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 um, schedule that we have over here. And I just think you saw him at the weekend. It, it was so poor. He just I turned into one of them players where, you know, when players have where you've got to have two and three and four touches, that's because they've got no confidence. They're not doing what they do naturally. So they've got to, they need an extra touch. Now, if you're playing a Liverpool team that are facing up to you, uh, it's very, very difficult. So let's not go too bad on that, on that game. Liverpool are a top, top team. They, they still are, right? And we didn't, we shouldn't really expect anything uh, uh, playing Liverpool anyway. And I do understand what you're saying, Femster. It was the manner, the manner that we got, we got beat. We got absolutely mullered. But I, I do say Liverpool were terrific on the day, brilliant on the day, and Arsenal were, were quite poor. We, they, were just, they were just better than us. And it could have been five or six, unfortunately. Yeah, I think <laughs> I'm glad you said that because obviously, like I said, that game is the, is the one that did shake my confidence because, mm. I, I, like I said, I've I've been sort of on the upward trajectory with our post Chelsea form. I've been, although you know, when you look at it, the points total has not been great, but we've we've looked pretty good in some games. The Wolves uh, pre Louise red card, we looked excellent. The um, the Leicester game, we looked excellent. You know, th- these are, you know, teams that, like you're saying, we were struggling against uh, a little while ago. So, you know, it's it, we have been putting in performances, dominating games more as well, uh, controlling possession, apart from the Liverpool and Man City game. So it, it, it was, you know, some fruits of, of something coming together. But like I said, it did shake personally my confidence a lot on Sunday because on Saturday because I was like I just didn't see us capable of doing that again but um we we we've we've got a lot of work to do I think one of the things that we do need to do is we need to work on a back four and consistently work with them the chopping and changing of our back four is is not helping us at all the chopping and changing of a center back pairing is 
definitely not helping us. You know, we 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 have a different centre back pair in every single game. It seems, and that cannot build any sort of of consistency, confidence. Then you're consistently changing your right back. The only constant in the back four is probably Tierney, maybe Louise, but now he's injured. So you, you kind of need to get a run together of a, of a central defensive partnership and say, you know, from now to the end of the season, you are my two and I'm going to stick with you. Let's build something, you know, instead of chopping and changing all the time. Callum Chambers coming in, then Hector, then Cedric, then you're, you know, you, how does a defence ever get to build a consistency from there? Well, it's true. And, and you know, the, the weekend, the Liverpool game, it, it was sad that we, I mean, we mm. lost four players that were most probably our most cons- consistent players for the last few weeks in Louise, Chaka, Saka and Emil Smith-Rowe. They're four, four of our best players at the moment. And now David Louise, I've said it from day one, he's, he's 30 seconds away from a, from a blunder that, that we concede a goal or a penalty or a sending off or one of those things, which he's, he's done a few times this year. But he has calmed it down and, and he has brought a, a, a calm to the defence uh, over the last few weeks. And I think that's why he's, he's more played most of the game, so to speak. But, you know... I did. I was looking at the lineup when it came out, and I thought Callum Chambers on the right hand side. Uh, all right, we've got Kieran Tierney, and Kieran Tierney he's a stonewall. He's, he's the left back. That's it. Uh, personally, I would have put Cedric at right back. I would have put Elneny in the centre midfield, knowing that Liverpool are going to press. Uh, we've seen Sabias. He has too many touches of the ball, and if he's having too many touches in front. I mean, he's given two or three goals away the last four times he's played, you know? Um, and you've seen him, if, if he's doing that in front in front of the, our penalty area, it's, it's going to be on us. I mean, he's going to lead to mistakes. Whereas Elneny, I know he's not the best player in the world, but he keeps the ball. He keeps the ball moving and he, he will join the dots. He is someone that can, he'll get the ball and he'll pass it to, you know, someone a little bit further up the park. And that's why our forwards couldn't get in the game. It's not really, it wasn't down to our forwards at the weekend because they just wasn't in the game. They couldn't get in the game. The Liverpool press, that's what they kept on doing. We, we'll, we'll play Liverpool. We'll play the game in Arsenal's front third, you know, and just keep on pressing and pre- and we just couldn't cope with it, and that's because and that's what when the lineup come out, I thought, well, we can't really go right to Callum Chambers because, oh, he's okay on the ball, but he's, he, I still don't say he's a natural right. I know he's played right back a lot, but he's not a natural right back, and I don't see why. I think Cedric is the best right back at the club. There's going to be people that disagree with me, right? But he's much more he's much more fluent with the football, and you can see him even when he come on when when Tierney went off. Right, he was he was doing okay at left back. He was doing you know he was flying up the pitch and he was comfortable on the football. He, and that's what pe- that's what um, that's what Arteta wants. He, he needs to build a team with full of people that are comfortable with the football because if you're going to play that style of play when you're playing out from the back, you need to be comfortable on the ball. You ain't got to be worried about your first touch. You know where all the players are. Otherwise, you're going to struggle. And that's what we did. The Liverpool game was was exactly what happened. Yeah, um, I agree with all of that, everything that you've both said. But it's not going back to something you said, Fen, with uh, the constant change in the defence. You look at the Brighton game on the 29th of December, clean sheet. Next game, West Brom, clean sheet. Palace, clean sheet. Newcastle, clean sheet. Let one in against Southampton, clean sheet against Man United. So how can Arteta look at that and go, well, we've, we've just had uh, six clean sheets in seven league games and then go and swap stuff around? Because... Looking back at them, that would be probably the Gabriel holding partnership or the, or the holding Murray, Murray partnership. Yeah, yeah, it might be. And, the... and, and then he dropped Gabriel again at the weekend. So I want to know from you two, start with you, Fem, what, what was your best back for? I know Leno in goals, we've got no choice. Although our Josh was saying he'd like to see um, Matt Ryan come in for a few games because he is a much better goalkeeper for the type of football that we want to play. Okay, if I mean we've now got injuries, so I'm gonna have to go with injuries. So if if we're talking about the last however many games of the season, eight in the league plus hopefully five Europa, well Leno has to stay in goal, even though his form seems to have 
just dips quite alarmingly, actually. This is probably not his best form since he's been at the club. Then, you, I mean, at right back, <laughs> for me, it's so difficult because now if we've, if we've lost Tierney, which seems like we have lost Tierney for a while, I personally, and I hate saying this because I said never, ever do this, but I would probably play Saka at left back. Unfortunately, yeah, because I, I just can't see how Cedric, a right footed player, can play left back long term for the rest of the season. But if if I'm being fair, okay, I'll, I'll look this is this is probably what Arteta does in his in his bedroom all night. <laughs> I'm struggling. I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll do this, maybe I'll do that. <laughs> all right, so let's let's do Cedric at left back. Um it has to be Gabriel, though I do like Marie, I'm not a big fan of Holding, but he has Holding got out jumped by a dwarf against and Liverpool. That's the second game that that yep. happened that Ridiculous. happened against Man City as well, yep. um, which is a bit concerning. Um, I, then, wasn't it? And I don't think it's the, it's the out jumped part of it. It's it's the fact that they haven't read the board. That's usually why that happens. It's usually like where you have a new contract. <laughs> yeah, you haven't read the flight of the ball. Is probably why that happen or you, you you haven't read the danger that's around you which is also what happened to to hold in against Aston Villa I don't know if you guys remember where in that first minute where Cedric made a mistake but holding was was not reading the danger around him so it's it's kind of those they're not glaring obviously obvious mistakes like Mustafa used to make but you know he he's he's solid enough he's only right footed now that we have I guess so holding kind of has to play and for me, I'll just stick with Hector. I know a lot of people are not going to like that. That will probably get a lot of hate. <laughs> but for me, I'll, I'll just stick with Hector for now. Just let them play consistently and to the end of the season. For me, he's 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 still reliable enough to play out the season. He's not just a, gone down the toilet overnight, uh, as many people think. I, I, I'm I'm fine with Hector playing right back. So if they were all fully fit, would you go Tierney, Gabriel? Yes. Did you say Mari? Louis. Louis. So Gabriel, Louise, and who if fully fit, you'd have Tierney or Bellerin at full right back. Bellerin. Oh, dear. I, still have I, I, Bellerin. I, I would go the same apart from Suarez. I, 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 Cedric Bellerin, I, or Bellerin, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. Um, I, I don't think he's in the same. He's in the same league as. as um, yeah, it is a it is a tough one. I mean, it, I, I do understand people's. Concerns about Hector. Um, the the I, thing is with Hector, he, he's he, he's neither he doesn't excel going forward, and he doesn't excel as the, as a defender either. Whereas I think I think uh, Cedric gives us a lot more going forward than he does defending, but um, he, he does get in there and he knows how to defend. But you know, it's yeah. all about opinions, isn't it? It is, then, yeah, because uh, because for me, it's it's also the job that Hector's asked to do. Because when Cedric does play in the team, he's he's more of a conventional right back. When Hector plays in the team, he's he's asked to come in the field quite a lot. When you watch the team, you know, and it, I don't know if you noticed in the Liverpool game, but Chambers seems to have been played mainly because he's an he was an out ball for Leno to launch the ball to. So, so we we just were launching long kicks to Chambers and that that's why at the end of the game when people were sending around those positional maps and Chambers was so high he was higher up the pitch than um Lacazette on the um <laughs> the positional maps at the end of the game is because he was constantly on the halfway line waiting for Leno to launch the ball to him. So it, it he seems to choose players based on games but I, I don't know if that's you know something we should be doing at the moment until we got a settled a settled team but moving forward we do need a right back because Cedric's getting oh, on yeah. I think Bellerin is he's, uh, he's another one of those players that um, I don't think he's got the ability to be in a, 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 a you know be a regular in an Arsenal team that really fights for Champions League and, and he's and not getting any better players. is he no, he's not getting any better, unfortunately. And I don't think he's going to get any better. And I think the best thing for him and the football club is they part company. Um, so we need a right back. I do think we need a centre-half. David Luiz is not going to be there forever. Rob Holding, I think he's OK. He'll come in and do a job every now and again. And he'll mostly be, be happy to stay. 
you know, uh, and fight for his place. But we do need a proper centre half, and these are the things that we've got. That's why we've just got to hold fire before we pull the tr- pull the plug on on Arteta because we've got to give him a chance, get his players in. You know, it Pep's the blueprint for him. Unfortunately. Uh, we haven't got Manchester City's money. We haven't got... Ma- I mean, Man City could win the Premier League with their second team. They've got 25 players and every single one of them could come in and they drop in and drop out and you wouldn't know no difference. You know, they're just, they're, they're, they've got to a stage now where it's so good. But it took him a little bit of time to get there and a hell of a lot of money. Arsenal yeah. haven't got the money or they've got the money, but they've not been they've not been backed the way the, the, the Man City have, have slung money at it, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. So, so we're just going to have to wait and see. And you know, Arteta's has really got to coach these players into how he wants them to play. But can he do they, that though? Well, they've got to have the fundamentals. These players have got to have the fundamentals. And I think there's six or seven players in Arsenal's first team squad that he's wrote off. He's seen him in training. He's given plenty of game time. And there's six or seven players that. No, he's crossed them off and he wants to replace with better players. Whether he gets the chance to do that, only time will tell. But that is, is, is you're going to see now whether he's going to last or not. Uh, he's Cronky. If he's got any ambition, Cronky, he might give him a few quid. So, right, go on, you've got that money. Go on, get on with it. And if now you've got the chance. And then now Arteta, the pressure's on you. You buy the players, you make it work, right? And if he's no good, He's gonna have to go. Simple as that. Yeah, but I, I mean, you, like you're saying with with Pep. I mean, if you look at Pep, the first thing that he did when he got his first big transfer window was he bombed the two fullbacks, which were Clichy and Sanya for for him at, in his first season. Yeah, and he went and spent he spent fifty million, million on yeah on Walker and Mendy straight Mendy, away. Yeah, yeah hundred million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big Straight money. away, but yeah. we can't do that, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. You know, we we can't. But we might be able to go and spend thirty million pound on Lamptey at Brighton or, or or something like that. You know, I mean, I like that. that is it Lamptey's name? Yeah, right, yeah. Right, yeah. right back. Yeah. I mean, it gets a little bit injury prone, but there are players out there in the lower leagues. They're definitely. You look at the way Leicester have done business. You look at the way, look at the way you know, Villa, are, Villa, Villa have Matt, done business. Matty yeah, Cash and... Matty Cash. That's right. Yeah. And the other kid on the left hand side. What's his name? Yeah. Good player. The, the yeah. left back for Villa. They're, they're good players. They're good, you know, strong. Tar- They've been... I think tar- is it Target? Target, is it? Target, yeah, of course. That's his yeah. name. Yeah, they're they're yeah. decent so, players. So the question I've got, we've got uh, five more minutes, then we're going to go and do questions. Fem, what does Arteta need to do to turn to turn this disaster of a season into a half-decent season, which is going to be top eight to maybe top six at a very at a push and... There's no chance of winning the Europa League. So what does he need to do to have a half-decent end to the season? And do you think he's going to do it? Well, the funny thing is, <laughs> I was just saying this in my um, with the guys that I sit with in um, at the Emirates. They were just in a group message with me and talking about... We should... Is that the bloke I met? No, 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 no. It's a different one, actually. <laughs> there, oh, we've got a group chat friends. in the block, block 132. <laughs> we'll be um, back soon. Oh, yeah. Please, let's be back soon. Please, please, please. Um, so we've got um, we've got um, this thing where they're, they're joking around about, oh, our season tickets will be much cheaper because we're not going to be in Europe next season. <laughs> but I said to them, we're not going to be in the Europa League more than likely because we it's going to be hard to catch up those places. But the more likelihood is we we might be in the Champions League because that's probably our best destination now to get into Europe is to win the Europa League. So, I mean, I I think in 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 two legged games, we cup games, we should be able to navigate our way to the at least the semi final. You know, let's let's see how we go in the next couple of games, and then let's see where we're going to put all our eggs. To be honest, because Looking at our fixtures, we are should be all right actually. With we, we we've got quite a a nice fixture list, you know. Everton at home and Chelsea away um, are probably our hardest fixtures left, but we should be able to navigate. Our, winning the Europa League is everything, and my biggest fear is is uh, you know as Jeff is 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 urging calmness is what happens when we go out of the Euro if. 
touch wood, we don't. But if we go out of the Europa League, you know, when a manager starts living on match to match reactions from fans, you're in big trouble. And if we go out of the Europa League, I don't, I, I might stay off the internet for a, a week or two. <laughs> Because the meltdowns that we're having over losing one or two games, if we, I mean, everyone is is literally put all their eggs into that basket, including the fans. Okay. And I fear, I fear the heartache and the, the pain, the arguments that are going to happen. You know, it, it, it's too much. It's a lot of pressure on that on that competition. But do you think if you had to, if you had uh, a, a shiny five pound note? Would you put it on us to win the Europa League? I put it on us to get to the final. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't even go that far. We'll get Every, through the next round by the skin of our teeth. I think we'll we'll we'll, we'll beat Slavia Prague. I think we've no. got enough. We should be beating Slavia Prague. I think if we meet Villarreal, that's going to be a Who very very again. yeah. That's going to be a tough game. Okay, I back us to get to the final. Let's put it like that. If we have to play Man United in the final, he's had Ole's number so far, so why not? But I'm not, I'll, put, I'll put two fifty on it. I'll take half. I'll take half <laughs> of your fiver and keep the other five and buy some <laughs> some chips or something. <laughs> Excellent, Jeff. Same question to you. What does Arteta have to do to have a decent end to the season, and will he do it? Um, he's got. A, he's got a win. Uh, What's the next five? How many league games? We've got eight, yeah? We've got, got away at games. Sheffield United, home yeah. to Fulham, home yeah. to Everton, away to Newcastle, home to West Brom, the only tough game away to Chelsea and away to Palace, and we end it at home to Brighton, so the Josh Derby. It, 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 if we can go through all those games and only drop four points, okay, and get to the final of the Europa League, right, he might, he might draw something back. But if we get, if we drop stupid points at uh, uh, you know, those so-called smaller teams that we're hanging around with now anyway, um, <laughs> then then you know he's, he's going to be in for a tough summer because people are, are they're already starting to doubt him, um, and you know it, it's going to be very difficult. Arsenal is a, is a big job; it's a really really big job, uh, and he's an inexperienced manager, and and it, and it will show. And, you know, they'll be calling him out on it. Do I think we can win the Europa League? Of course we can. We're a, we're a cup team. You know, we, we You're can. You're ever the romantic, Jeff. We can. We can definitely. We got to the final, you know, Have last you seen year. the play recently? Uh, well, yeah, I know. But I've seen the good games as well, Dan. I've seen the good games as well. Yes. You know, when we have, we have some. Well Chelsea. Against... Yeah, Spurs, well, that's, that's all right. We that's thought we were going to win the world after smashing Spurs. Yeah. Then what happened? Yeah, we just West Ham just killed us. But you know, it's only it's only um, two, it's only five games. We could we could win that tournament. You know, we could win that Europa League. But we're going to have to play well in every single game to win it. And to do that, does he have to pick one or Lacazette or Aubameyang? Is that is that the key thing that he needs to do as a striker? Oh, it's so difficult, isn't it, mate? You know, it's so difficult. I would like to see them both in the same team uh, and complementing each other. But it, it, I don't know. It's just, you know, then you've got a shoehorn in uh, Smith Rowe, Saka, um, Odegaard. It's very, very difficult to play all those players. But, you know, you've got squad rotation. To win all those league games that, we, that I'm hoping we're going to win, you know, you're going to have to, you're going to have to rotate. So they'll all get, they'll get plenty of games. They'll get plenty okay. of games. Okie dokie, right. Um, find your gentlemen's nods, which are coming up in about 10 minutes. And we're going to do a listener's questions. So be, uh, first one from Witty Remark 99 in Twitch. Um, for you, Femi, what is the aim next season? Does Arteta need a top four or top six to deserve a new contract at the end of next season? That would be. Uh, the aim has to be to be competitive. Um, we have to be competitive. We cannot be. <laughs> we cannot call ourselves a big club, you know, and be scraping around eighth, ninth wondering if we can even hit the heights of seventh. So we have to be comfortably 
chance. I mean, look at the the top four. If you look at it now, West Ham are are in the top four. We, I was looking at that yesterday. I was pretty surprised. I was like, you know, this is a West Ham team, like Sophie was saying. That was fans were protesting last season. So I I don't see, you know, with a lot of surgery as we've spoken about, why we cannot make up. 10 points. If you look at a lot of games that we've lost this season, they've been by the odd goal. If you swing that the other way, if you find a way to swing that with more whatever you want to do, why can't you get more points that way? The games that you've lost by the odd goal, you you win them by the odd goal, um, which is what Man United did from last season to this season, which is why they've jumped to second in the league. So, for me, I don't see any reason why we cannot be challenging the top four next season. We were right next to Chelsea, you know, when Lampard got sacked, um, you know, and they just had a, a mini run and they're right out the league. So, you know, challenging but, for top four is not out of the question at but, all. But they deserve it, you know. I've been watching West Ham. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. And they deserve it. They're, they're organised, you know. Everyone was laughing and joking about when when Moisey was at was at Man United all those years ago. But uh, he done well at Everton. Uh, then when United have a, he had a nightmare at United, he was most probably bumped off too early. Uh, that maybe that that was a too big a job for him. But you see, once he settled down there at West Ham, he's got them all playing. They're all they're all doing the right thing. They're all working together as a team. Where we've got a lot of individual players still. Uh, and we, 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 Arteta's got, to, you know, he's got to find a way to get a tune out of them as a team. And slowly but surely, I'm hoping that we'll get there. I, don't, I think top four is going to be too much of a jump for for next season. But um, you know, if, if we can get, if we can get into, to, if we can try and squeeze into seventh or eighth this season, and then got in, get in the top six next season, or or if we can, you know, get the the, the, the personnel that, that he wants in. And it is only, a, you, look, you look at what, I mean, Lingard, the way he's gone to West Ham and he's done an amazing yeah. job since he's been there. Uh, and they've got some, they've got some good players and they're overachieving West Ham. You look at, you look at the sum of their squad. Okay. They are overachieving. Arsenal, you look at them on paper and you look at West Ham. Arsenal should be doing better than West Ham, player for player. But that's not happening. It's all about what you do on grass, not on paper. Very true indeed. Uh, I was looking for some more pictures to put up of uh, the AVW lot. Um, right, next question will be for you, Jeff. It's from Guna Dub. I've had to slightly edit this question to make it uh, make more sense in my head. He says, Nelson and Nketiah have the same agent as Balogun. Any coincidence that since the last contract talk breakdown with them, Nelson and Nketiah seem to be frozen out? Because that is, we were saying earlier, um, Femi was saying about how Nketiah hasn't even been on the bench for so many games. And and Nelson, uh, he, he scored that great goal against Liverpool last season. Or, yeah, last, was it last? Yeah, last season. Yeah, last season. And now, nowhere to be seen. And that's exactly, he can play left or right. And he can play in the 10. I know, but you've got, you've got, you've got to give respect to, to the manager. He sees them every single day in training. He sees how they perform. Uh, I do think it's... You know, it's not it's not a coincidence that that, that they've been out. Of, I don't think it's a coincidence they're both out of the team and they're both they're all under contract at the end of the season. Uh, I'm not sure about Nelson, but I know and and Ketia, um, and, and Balagan. I think Enketia has got one more left, has not he? I think uh, no maybe maybe Nelson. I think he has, and I think maybe Nelson's yeah, got another year. year. Yeah, uh, but Nelson's Balagan. Two, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but Balogun's out this at the end of this, and he's got the same agent. Uh, you know what it's like. You, you've got an agent that's causing you a little bit of a, a ruckus in 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 the camp when you're trying to negotiate with Balogun, um, and you've got Edin Aketia and Nelson. Even as a person, you unfortunately you can't help it, but you know there's going to be a bit of a prejudice against them because you well you you're using this guy and he's he's, he's trying to. He's trying to squeeze me a little bit on Balagan. Um, you're not really doing it for me. Listen, he's Arteta's maybe going to expect the same treatment from the, the same agent this time next year from the other two guys. Fair enough, good answer. But it is. But then uh, again, Saka has the same agent, so we do have to look at it. If it might just be a quality thing. 
as yeah. Jeff said. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I think I think I think he has crossed them off the list, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's that's what you were saying. There's some players in this first team squad that he's just decided, okay, that they're just they'll be there for emergency, but that's it. Okay, right. Next question for you, Fem. It is uh, from Welsh Gunnar. Why do you think there have been so many abject and infuriating, mm, nearly didn't get that word out, performances this season? I've never felt so angry at so many performances in one season. Liverpool and Villa at home, first half v West Ham, probably the worst that come to mind. Any idea about that? Um, I think you've got to look at the part that the lack of fans might play in this because I was looking at our home record. I think we are uh, one more defeat from our worst home record in the Premier League. I, I want to say uh, we've had some of our worst home rec- uh, home defeats in, you know, in our living history, you know, losing to teams like Burnley, which never been seen before in since the 70s i think it was we broke, uh, we broke so many negative yes yeah, so many I, negative I, I, i've stopped I've, I've tried to stop looking at orbino's um, <laughs> uh, i've had to unfollow him <laughs> so, back yeah, so if, you, if, if you look at that i mean the fans do have a part to play in that because i know for a fact there's no way that you are losing four or five games in a row at the emirates without there being absolute fans going crazy you know you know things like that there's just no way and even the, the games where you're you're sort of losing by the odd goal the fans will encourage you if they see that you need that little push so i think we we underestimate how much of a of an impact that does have to play in 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 some of the results but you know it's been a it's been a very tough season you know it, it's been a it's been a very very tough season to watch um you know it's 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 a weird one you know it, it's i want to i want to keep I, I just want to keep the powder dry on to the end of the season let's just try and get through to the end of the season and let's see uh, i've got faith that we can win sort of five six in a row and things will look a, a lot better to be honest with you i, I remember on the arson we used to have these sort of February, March collapses, and then by April, May would go on this absolutely amazing run, and everyone would be feeling good for the summer. So <laughs> let's let's see what what difference a few a few wins can make. We'd, we'd, we'd skip into the top four with players like Skilachi and Giroud, and <laughs> a little score update here, people. If uh, for Ellis, for Nick, and I think Phil Mecca, Norwich have just won seven 0 at home against Huddersfield in the Championship, and Liverpool. Uh, uh, 10 minutes left in the game and they're 3-1 down at Real Madrid so that's uh, that's going to wow. make us all smile and I think who's there oh it's their Man, left Man, Man City are beating Dortmund aren't they with 10 minutes to go 1-0 yeah I saw Chris Chris <coughs> put in the chat that it was a something dodgy I didn't see dodgy that. pen yes <laughs> right um, question for you Jeff we've done that one from Sean on Twitter Arteta should get the summer transfer window and all of next season to prove he's right, the right person for the job. Agree as two parts is agree or disagree. If you agree, what are the minimum requirements to keep him beyond that? Does winning the Europa League this season change that calculus? Well, this is this is this is one of the that question. <laughs> this is this is one of the well, this is one of the things that I don't I don't want Arsenal going into that 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 role where we're just going to bounce manager to manager to manager. Um, I do think, I do think that Emery should have been given his three years and, and kept at the three years. I, I do think Arteta should given, should be given at least three years. Um, and if we do a little if we improve a little bit each time, he should be given another year. Uh, because it, it's the worst thing in the world where you're just bouncing from manager to manager, hoping someone will come up. You know, so so I just I, I I do think that he should be given another contract. Yes. What I would say on this is, and I said this, I think I said this in the ABW group chat. I would rather not sack him during the season, if that makes sense. So if if things are falling apart and fans are going crazy when we're all back in the stadium and things like that, and then they uh, they want to pull the trigger, 
I'd rather them just wait to the end of the season. So if they decide this summer, that's it. He's our man. And if it falls apart next season, do, don't do it during the season, is what I would say. Uh, it, it's going to cause absolute mayhem again like it did last season. And um, I just don't trust the people in charge to have a clear plan. So if the plan is Arteta, stick with it. Bury your head in the sand and make it work. <laughs> That's my message. Yeah, I agree. Um, quick one for you, Femi. Uh, from our very own Stefan Silby, captain of the ABW FIFA team, a man not to be crossed. Would you play Saka and Smithrow against Slavia Prague if they are not 100% fit? Uh, this is a tough one. I did see this question. If we're going to rest them, we... There's no point in saving them for the Sheffield United game. Let me put it like that. <laughs> if they are, if they're, if they're sort of nearing for, I mean, Saka was training at the end of last week. Maybe oh, they're both just, training just, today. Yeah, maybe it just came too soon for him. Um, mm. And with Smith Rowe, I, th- I think Ad Boothroyd did say he could have played for the unders. Last what week, does that so idiot it, know? I wouldn't trust that idiot to tell me whether it's light or dark outside. <laughs> so it might not have been that much of a serious injury. So yes, I would, I would play them and then rest them again on Sunday. But saying that, though, I mean, a, a lot of these players. If you look at Saka, for example, he was ticking over. Everyone was saying, "Oh, he needs a rest. He needs a rest." He was ticking over playing every three days. As soon as he got a rest, that's when he started getting injuries. So sometimes. You know these players are like machines. If you if you less training, more playing. You know it's it's game time, isn't it? Like if you train them less, you give them less work load on the training ground, and they're playing every three days. They seem some of these players just just can handle it. You know players like Messi, Ronaldo in the past, they played every single game. That if you even try to take them off, they'll give the manager a death stare. So sometimes players know their own body, you know better than we as fans know. So there you go. Very true. Good answer. Right. I'm uh, next question. I've only got uh, a few more to go. How much time have we got left? We've got all oh, we're nearly at our limit. Um, a quick question for me from Funky Chris. He says, "Would you sport a Bummy Young's haircut whilst wearing this? I think this is aimed at you, Jeff. <clears throat> whilst wearing a I I red heart. Oh, I, it's not red heart. I love." soulful house because that's what you do on your your soundcloud isn't it do you want to give that a plug is he still alive that funky chris he's in prison yeah he's in yeah prison. for for um he's for a, cr- crime against humanity he's always been a bit of a tosser to be honest with you so, <laughs> so give him a wide berth funky chris <laughs> He actually he has changed his ways lately in the last few years no, he's not no, as he's big a, of a tool he's a tosser <laughs> Um, so, I think if we went unbeaten for the rest of the, the 13 game with the end of the season, uh, of course I'd wear it because it's, it's Jeff's does his wonderful soulful house mix on SoundCloud, don't you, Jeff? And I've listened to you, and it's quite good. And I'm not even a music person. Thank, thank you, Daniel. Thank you, sir. Very, very good. Right. Um, our own John Welsh says, in hindsight, was giving a bum young a huge contract a mistake? Uh, Femi, yes or no? Um. In hindsight, yes. Jeff, yes or no? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, club's uh, got to be say, bigger than that. I say yes as well because he was all over Europe like some kind of uh, virus trying to get another club to sign him. And once he didn't, he come back and went, I'll sign it. Um, right, Jeff, Dash, no, for me, Dash Conrad. We have, in quotes, factions Within the dressing room, it seems Gary Neville said on Monday Night Football that his eyes tell him some players aren't playing for the manager. He brought up the front three versus Liverpool. What's more important to our rebuild, the right characters, mentality, or skillful players? Is that to me or Femi? Femi. I think Femi's gone through. I'll answer it. Uh, I think it's a bit of both, to be honest with you. I wasn't looking. You got to have, you got to have, you got to have characters. You got to have the right characters to, 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 you know, to, to build that that squad. You got to have, you know, the, the right characters. But you got to have discipline in there as well. Um, but you know what? These footballers nowadays they're paid so much money. They're generally paid more than what's the, what, what the manager is, especially someone like Arteta. Okay. Um, 
and you know it's it's it's, it's tricky. But I think Arteta is at least we've 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 craved for a long while uh, a disciplinarian, someone that's not going to be too loyal to the footballers. We've got that now. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to lump it. See how we get on with it. Fair enough. Um, question I'll answer this on from Matt L. Roberts, who was recently on one of our preview shows. He says, if the team continues to decline without meaningful support from the hierarchy, how do you expect the team to improve? The academy seems to be the soul of the team. I don't think it is going to improve, mate. You sent us in four questions. We haven't got time for them all. But I think the academy is, we said this years ago, we need to have an academy that is producing the players that would otherwise cost us 30, 40, 50, 60 million to buy. But we need to keep hold of them and keep them sweet because without those academy players, Jeff, we would be knackered this season, wouldn't we? Yeah, we, we definitely would be. Um, it's been great that the way they've come in uh, and, and lifted us at a time when we were so down. Uh, and you know, you know what? What, what I am concerned about, again, that, that honeymoon period that I told you about, that I spoke about, where, where you get these young players, they come in and they're bouncing about for the first half a dozen games and then that that um, the responsibility, the, the worry of the responsibility and the, the, the job that they've got ahead, uh, and they when they get to think about it and think, oh, I've got to do this every single week and the pressure builds and builds and builds, especially when they've come in and they've done so well. Um, and I think we've seen that a little bit with Smith Rowe. I remember he come in, he, 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 he bounced and he was he was different class. He was, you know, really, really good. Uh, but he's, 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 he's been a little bit... But um, he's not been how he was the two, first two or three or four games. But what he's doing well is he's making sure, right... He's keeping possession of the football. He's not making mistakes all over the pitch. You know what I mean? Where some do. Um, so, yeah, the youngsters have done really well. Let's just keep their feet on the ground, like Saka. If we can just, if we can all, if they can all be like Saka, the way he's come in and he just continued. They're all over, been overplayed. They're all been in the red zone, you know, for, for such a young age. So we've got to nurture them and look after them at the same time. Otherwise, you'll get what you're ha you've had over the last few weeks, where they've been in and out of the team. For, for injuries and whatever very good um right fan we've got two more questions one from you from a b h i guna not be abby um this is uh three questions all in one is arteta getting the best out of the resources available if we don't qualify for europe next season does he need the sack and what's the point of sacking wenger that we will want to instill a performance culture what Arteta is doing, how it can, how can it be acceptable? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, is he getting the best out of the resources? Um, he isn't for me. Getting, I think he's <laughs> getting. He, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's a weird one because, like I said, I do like a lot of the things that he's trying to do, um, but I don't think he's getting the best out of the resources that he's got. I don't think he's... I think, for example, the what the Pepe one that um, Sophie said when she was on, the chopping and changing Pepe. Last week he was on the left. This week he's on the the right. The, you know, all these things, you know. Um, so, no, I, I, that I don't think so. Does he deserve the sack? No. Um, no. I, I don't think there's... Like Jeff said, I don't think there's a point sacking him. I think the club have invested into him. They've made him the manager instead of the head coach. So once you've made that decision, let it run and see how where it leads you. If it gets, I mean, if it's like this next season, then fair enough. He he can't have any complaints as well. And the last question, Wenger performance, all of, I, the point I, of it all. Yeah, it's it's a tough one. I think we had to, for me personally, we had to move on from. Um, from Mr. Venga, I think he it was going to a, a level that you know players weren't improving. Think you know fans were not happy. I think it just came to a natural end. To be honest with you, yes, it hasn't been great, great, great. But you know we we will get there in the end. I think I think we'll get there. 
Okie dokie, right, um, uh, done that one, done the final question, Mr Jeff Arsenal from our very own Nicky Wilson, he says, Pepe's nearly had two full seasons at Arsenal, has he done enough to justify the 70 million and do we sell or extend his contract because he's just finished season two on a five year deal I think it was? I think I think um I think Arteta can see something in him. I think that he's been coaching him, strongly coaching him, like he did with um Sterling, like he did with mm-hmm. Mares when he was at Manchester City. I think that was his job. He took him to the side and give him extensive coaching. What you've seen from 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 Pepe in the last few weeks is uh, I think he's more or less said to him, listen, you've got to keep possession of the football. We, if we're a, p- uh, a possession team, you've got to keep possession. You can you can do your coffee house tricks and, and do what you like in the final third of the pitch, but make sure um, that this, you get something out of it. I, you score a goal or, or you get an assist or you, you create a chance. Otherwise, you pass, you keep the ball. And I think that's what he's been doing the last few weeks. I think you have seen a change in him. He has been... He's been keeping the ball. He's been getting back in and defending. He's trying very, very hard. So, um, hopefully, Mikel can coach him into a, a player that we want. Listen, you, you've seen the talent he's got and you've seen the pace he has got and you've seen the damage he can do uh, when he is playing well, once he's on song. But it's too inconsistent. And, you know, um, a little bit like Alex Iwobi used to do the Fandango. In the, it'd be, you know, he'd, he'd more or less beat himself trying to do flicks and tricks and bits and pieces where sometimes a simple thing, football's a simple game, make the ball do the work, right? And there's, like Smith Rowe, he's very, he just keeps the ball nice and simple, but he, 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 he's, he's, good as, he's good as a lot of them up there. So hopefully... Pepe will uh, will improve under good coaching and we'll keep him. If not, if he don't conform, if he doesn't take up the coaching, I think he'll out him. I really do. I think we'll cut our losses and, and, and let him go. Man City have just scored in the 90th minute to make it 2-1 against my mighty Dortmund. Right, that is all the questions. Thank you very much to everybody who sent a question in. We're quickly going to do the gentleman's nod. Uh, Femi, is anybody who'd like to give a gentleman's nod to? Um, I'm just looking at um, who's interacted on Twitter last. Uh, Big Simon sixty nine at Simon, at Big Simon. That's Welsh Guna. He's he sent in one of the questions, so uh, he's someone that I regularly talk to on Twitter. So I'll Big Simon out. at Big Simon sixty nine. No, no, no. You you read it out. Yeah, you read it out. Oh, good. Oh, there you go. Lovely (laughs) chat, Jeff. uh, I suppose this has been a while. You've got a list of about hundred people you'd like to thank. Everybody that follows you, all one hundred ninety thousand of them. You know what? I've not been on Twitter for really. uh, Just every now and again, I pop. I I pop in and out. You know. You know, either before or after the game. But what I would like to do is, I would love to know the opinions and, and give a gentleman's nod to. The couple of guys that we've lost from the podcast over the last few years, uh, Dave the Goonaholic uh, and and Lord Hillwood, Steve Lord Hillwood, they will never be forgotten, and um, they get my gentleman's nod. They'll always, they'll always get my gentleman's nod. But I'd love to know their opinions because, you know, Steve, I can't oh, imagine, I can't imagine blue. what, oh, I can't imagine what he'd be saying right now about Arsenal. Bless oh. him. We might even have heard uh, Mr. Hollick get a little bit angry. Which, uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, God bless him. Um, God bless him. My uh, one from the pod, uh, or both from the pod, actually, uh, a sad one. Uh, Claude passed away from natural causes last week. Uh, I know uh, he wasn't everyone's cup of tea. I, I was DMing him every now and then. And the last time I DMed him, he was asking about who I was, what podcast I was moaning about. And I said, don't worry, it wasn't yours. And... Uh, I said, how are you getting on? And he said, I'm really struggling with all the abuse online. He said, it's not a good place. And yeah, now he's gone. So people be nice to each other. If you, if you wouldn't say it to somebody's face, don't say it on Twitter or, or any of those places, Very because true. it just means, just means you're a scumbag. And now, uh, um, yeah, at least he didn't take his own life over it. And it was natural cause, which I heard on, on a podcast though, from people who knew him and love him. So yeah, um, it's very sad for Claude and his family. And on a brighter note, 
Um, our mate Harry Simu has announced that him and his missus and his little boy are having another baby. I think he's got a little boy at the moment. Have another baby in October. Hopefully it'll be born on October the 10th, like me. Charlie, George and Tony Adams, the best day of the year to be born is the October the 10th. So congratulations to Harry. And we will be back. Uh, oh, there you go. Loki's just put in there. Claude was a good chap. Claude, Claude was a good chap. He just got people picked on him because people are assholes. Um, yeah, we'll be back on Thursday. And th this cheeky monkey, there he is. He actually is 42% monkey. James Real Stokes. Oh, Jeff Stokes and uh, Jockman have, have joined the pod to do podcasts. And, and Daniel might be as well. Good uh, signings. Yeah. Good they song. are up doing shows, which is they're now in our other WhatsApp group, which is really good. So uh, uh, Stokes will be making his uh, ABW Live debut on Thursday with me after the show. I will be on a podcast on Thursday evening before the game. I will be on the same old Arsenal with Craig and... Oh, I can't remember their names. Uh, Suburban Gooner Chris. I think there's a couple of other blokes. And yeah, we're just talking, just talking general football and stuff like that. It's going to be a good laugh. And then on Sunday, we are Sheffield United away. I've got no idea who's going to be available for that lot. Uh, I know it, it won't be this little cheeky fellow in the top right hand corner. It's not going to be our Josh because he's been he's been evacuated from to north and he's been evacuated back down to to south. So he's coming home because it's too cold for him living in the dark, grim north. He's got fed up of having no electricity and no running water. So he's coming home good old boy right thank you very much jeff for joining us you have been spectacular as always always a pleasure danny it's great to be back mate thank you and, and and thanks famster it's only you and me left now from the original six or seven that do shows uh -huh. yeah at times. i think i'll pop it before you do though dan <laughs> <laughs> Um, thank you, Femster, for being with us. The, the voice of reason. I know you're bursting to get some things out. Have you have you satisfied your anger? Jeff calmed me down. To be fair, he, I was I was I've been I've been on a yeah. <laughs> I've been on a, my, my, head's, my head's <laughs> been on fire for since Saturday night. But Jeff Jeff calmed me down with some of his uh, his his words of let's just let's calm down and. <laughs> Let's get to the end of the season and pray we never see this type of season again. Oh, it's <laughs> been mad. It has been mad. <laughs> right, everybody in the chat, um, thank you to Sophie. There is the link to Sophie's podcast in the, the chat at the moment. If you could uh, go and after the show, just click on that or go now. Click on that. Go and watch her and Kev having a chat. Tell them that you, we've sent you over and say hello and be nice and give them a subscribe because they're a fantastic podcast. Thank you very much, Sophie, for coming and joining us tonight. And that is it. One hour, 47 minutes. One, four, seven, Jeff. What a way to end a game of snooker. One, four, seven indeed, Daniel. It is. Right. Thank you very much, everybody. We will see you later. Click on the link. Go and see Sophie and Kev. They're brilliant. Goodbye.